Welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're gonna to take a look at the multiple ways in which you can change an image into black and white. Photoshop excels at finding multiple ways to do the same thing. Sometimes these ways are beneficial in certain circumstances and sometimes they're just repetitive. Today we're gonna to take a look at how to convert a color image into black and white. First way we're gonna take a look at this is probably the easiest, but the least beneficial to your image. So we're gonna come up here to hue saturation and we are just gonna desaturate all the color. And now we are in grayscale. However, I must say, if you look up here at this image and let's get rid of this, we'll come up here notice you are still in RGB. This is just an adjustment layer. This hasn't actually turned this image into grayscale. And any of the methods that you see, until you come up to image mode and go to grayscale, and it converts your image and it says gray up here, it's not truly a grayscale image, it's just a desaturated color image or RGB image. That's very important to know. We're just gonna go back to when this was a color image, you're gonna come up to file and go to revert. Revert will take you back to how the image was when it was originally open as long as you have not saved it. So we have this image. The way we did this is go to hue saturation and simply just desaturate the color and then you have a black and white image and we'll go ahead and turn that method off. The next method that I'm gonna show you is a little bit different. This is sort of an old school method. We're gonna go up here to image adjustments and then down to channel mixer. Where's channel mixer? Channel mixer is right here. Now the way this works is you wanna come down and tick this little monochrome box. And what this is gonna allow you to do is combine your red, your green, and your blue channels. You will notice that right now you have 100%. So 40 plus 40 plus 20 equals 100. So we have down here 100%. If you go down a little bit, you're now only gonna be at about 66% of the total percentage of the colors. So what you're trying to do is adjust these numbers a lot of times and still keep this at 100%. However, it doesn't mean that you have to do that. A lot of times what people will do is completely remove the blue channel. So we're gonna go to zero. I'm just gonna come in here and type zero. The blue channel usually has the most noise in it and they're gonna do some sort of a combination of the red and the green channels. So we will put in 53 and then we'll try to make this 100 and we got pretty close. And I can shift this around and make my reds a little darker and I can make my greens a little brighter. And that is changing how this image looks. Now we could simply just make this zero and make this 100% if we really liked the way that the green channel liked and you could copy this and put it up here. So we need to put a zero here, paste that there, and then we're 100% of the red channel. The last thing that we have inside of the channel mixer is this constant, and you can slide this to make your image a little bit darker and this to make everything a little bit brighter. Now, I don't usually move this, but it is something that you can actually go ahead and adjust if you wanted to do something odd or something specific to your image. So Channel Mixer uses a combination, usually of the red and the green channel, but truthfully you could do 100% of the blue channel if you wanted. So we could come down here and type in 100 and then your image would look like this. Any combination of these channels is gonna give you an image, but that image is gonna vary. So you can see as we darken this red, it's holding that highlight there better. So I can come in here and start adding some green and we're not really blowing this out, but we're keeping all that detail. Now I'm at 112%, so I can come in here and kind of fiddle with this. So I could say, hey, I wanna dial some of this out to get that. Any combination of the channel mixer is gonna give you an image inside of Photoshop. So that is allowing you some control of your image. The next way to convert to black and white is really simple, but probably the least useful. 
So at this point, I think it is important to say a perfectly toned color image is not a perfectly toned black and white image. This is very important. What looks good, perfectly toned in color, is usually too dark in black and white. So if you know you're going to tone in black and white, don't waste your time toning it in color first a lot of the times because it's going to be completely different. We can come up here and just simply go image mode, grayscale, and it's going to automatically convert that grayscale. It is not giving us any control over it, but if we want a method in which we can convert something to grayscale, and this being a true grayscale, because this is a gray image, that is another way to do that. Now, the most popular and the most recent method of creating black and white images is the most popular, and it is up here under image, adjustments, and black and white. Or you can simply just come here to the adjustment layer for black and white, or you can come down here and we'll just use this one, black and white. And it's going to still be a color image, but what's really cool about this, it's gonna allow us to alter the grayscale of each color in the image. So anything that has red in it, I can make it brighter or darker. Anything that has yellow, I can make it brighter or darker. Anything that has green, brighter or darker. A lot of times, unless you have trees, you might not see green. Anything that has cyan, I can control. Anything that has blue, I can control. Anything that has magenta, I can control. So this is giving us a lot of control over the conversion before we do go in and to edit this image. Now, this is just the conversion. This is not toning it. So once you do this, you're not done. We need to go in and finish toning the image. Okay, so we are gonna take a look at this image and we are going to convert it to black and white. Now, if you notice, we've got some blues and some magentas and some yellows and some odd colors. This is gonna allow us to use this method over here where we can control each color to get the most out of this image. Now remember, this image was toned in color. It does not mean that after I do the conversion, it's gonna be a perfectly toned black and white image. But what we will do is come up here and create a black and white adjustment layer. And then I can come in here and I can start adjusting this red to get the red or the values where I want them. Now, one very important aspect that you need to pay attention to, and we've gone over this before, is this info palette here. So notice I've got red, green, and blue, which doesn't matter, but what I'm looking for is this K. I wanna make sure that I hold the K value. So right here, we still have some detail. You can see it was at three and it went to one. We wanna keep the brightest value around 2% unless we do want a specular highlight or to blow out an area on purpose. But most of the time you're trying to hold highlight detail. So I'm using this info palette to kind of hover over those areas to make sure that I keep that detail that does exist there. And anytime that you lose your properties panel, all you gotta do is come over here and click on this little icon. So if we go down here, notice the property is gone for that. If I want to bring up the properties for this adjustment layer, I just click on it and it's back alive. So those are a few different ways you can convert an image into black and white. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>